Wednesday night basketball and Patrick Ewing is in the building. No, this is not the 90s and no, it's not the Knicks and the Chicago Bulls, but it is the Georgetown Hoyas facing off against your DePaul Blue Demons. Jack Lowe here alongside Jalen Hancock. Jalen, let's start with DePaul coming off their best win of the season, missing two key pieces in Javon Freeman Liberty and Javon Johnson. They're led by a career high Carissier McCauley, you know, what do they have to do to continue that momentum and kind of create a little bit of a, a burst to what is in less than a month the Big East Tournament in Madison Square Garden? Yeah, um, totally. I totally think that what they need to do to con keep this up basically is, you know, just keep their eye on the prize. Um, you know, like you said, they're having one of their best seasons um, with an 11-10 overall um not that great in the big east but it's not like that you know that's not too important right yeah. now um definitely keep your eyes on the prize you know when it comes down to um doing their following their plays um communicating with each other on the court that's all they need to do and then definitely watching uh what their other team is doing you know getting used to um the different plays that they're playing um how you know the players are playing themselves you know, being able to identify their weaknesses and their strengths is definitely going to be a key component. Um, and if they can catch on to that quick, the sooner the better, and they'll be able to, you know, hopefully get a win over Georgetown today. Yeah, those Georgetown Hoyas, like you just mentioned, are having a program worst season. They come in six and 15. That's their lowest win mark in 21 game span in program history. They're 0 and 10 in the Big East, their biggest losing streak in their program history. And this is all under who is probably the most beloved Hoya in program history, Patrick Ewing. The Hoya sit last in the Big East. And it's hard to believe, uh, less than a year ago, Georgetown made a miraculous run in the Big East tournament, won the tournament, and gained an automatic bid in the NCAA tournament. And here they are now, a program that is just seeking any kind of relevancy at this point. <laughs> So, Jalen, what, what does Georgetown need to do? You, you, you know, you're 6-15. and 15. You haven't won a game since December 15th. You haven't won a road game all year. You know, how as a team, how do you pick yourself up? And as collegiate athletes, how do you come about tonight's game? Honestly, as a former athlete myself, um, coming off, if you're having a really bad season, the best thing that you can do, you just got to focus and trust one another. Um, having trust in your team is going to be the best thing that they can rely on at this point. Um, like you said, they haven't had a road win in all a year. All year, basically. <laughs> um, at this point, the best thing they can do is hope. They can hope. They can, you know, do what they think is best for them. Yep. Um, with DePaul having such a good season so far, you know, they need to do what they need to do. You need, they need to put their head in the game. That just goes with any athlete. Um, they, yeah, that's all they can do at this point is you just got to have a lot of hope. And if you don't have that, then yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Very well <laughs> said. So here are your starting lines for today's game. First on the Hoya side, freshman and probable Big East freshman of the year, Aminu Muhammad. The Dante Harris at guard. Donald Carey, the graduate senior. Colin Holloway a forward and Timothy Egoefe, the big man and four-year DePaul Blue Demons guard Jalen Terry guard Phil Montgeber with forward David Jones forward Brandon Johnson and center Nick Ongenda we're here it's eight o'clock it's late but we want to thank you all for tuning in we got Brandon Bowens back in the studio as well two of the bottom teams in the Big East but we expect a fascinating battle tonight as DePaul wins the tip and Jalen Terry brings the ball up. Jalen Terry, the Oregon transfer. Brandon Johnson cuts inside. Gieberwick goes inside. Colin Holloway on him. Johnson goes in on Holloway. Johnson goes inside. That is good. The floater by number 35. And DePaul does what they do best is starting hot on the offensive side. And Georgetown, a team that ranks last in defense in the Big East. Aminu Muhammad with the ball up top. The five-star Freshman making an impact. Donald Carey for three. Nothing but nylon for the grad student. Donald Carey is the first captain of a Georgetown team in Patrick Ewing's coaching day. I thought that's very interesting to name. You know, actually publicly name a captain. But nevertheless, the Hoyas make their first shot as well. David Jones with the ball at the free throw line. He loses the ball. Donald Carey with the steal. 
pushes it to Mohammed. Mohammed drives in, crosses over. That's no good, but is fouled, and he will shoot too. I'm definitely going to add in on this. Uh, you know, they're, Georgetown is coming off hot. The, uh, definitely just came off uh, the bench kind of hot. You know, they, you know, they're away from home. Yeah. It, it seems like they're trying to set themselves up. Uh, you know, the steal was really good. Yep. Free throws are looking good right now. Um, you know, it, you know, it only is. We only have 19 <laughs> minutes <laughs> yeah, left. Yeah, and then we have another half. So. Exactly. But, a, but like you said, good start as Muhammad makes start. both free throws. But, I mean, think about how hard it is for Patrick Newing to be a coach of a team he once was a part of at their program worst, you know. Just as a player, where was he, when he was there, was a program best, and now he's the coach. His first head coaching job of his career. So it's kind of such a tough in between for a guy like Patrick Ewing, a guy who the media loves but has had his struggles as a head coach with the Hoyas. Gibrewit drives inside. That's no good. A block by Igo Efe. Muhammad with the ball. Could be a steal as well, but nevertheless, Muhammad, he loses it, but he is fouled from behind. That foul will be on number five, Philmon Gibrewit. So they're going to mark that as a shot from Gibrewit. That was a rebound by Muhammad, and that's the second foul on Gibrewit. And Corvisier McCauley, who had a career game against Xavier, checks in for the first time. I'm sure Tony Stubblefield wants that same kind of performance, and he might need that same kind of performance to win tonight. Dante Harris, a quick guard, goes up top to Holloway on the wing of Muhammad. Muhammad goes to his left. He drives inside. The mid-range floater is off on Genda with the rebound. Terry brings the ball up. Terry uses the screens, goes up top to Johnson. Jones, three in the wing. That one's off the back rim. The sophomore guard, Big East tournament player, of the, or got the tournament award. Dante Harris goes to his left. He drives inside. That's no good. Igo Efe with the offensive rebound. That one is off as well. Johnson with the rebound. Terry brings the ball up. Terry up top to Jones. Uh, Mohamed on Jones, double teamed now. Johnson, three, actually passes off to Angenda on the baseline. Igo Efe on him. He loses that one. A steal by the freshman, Mohamed. And Mohamed brings the ball up. Mohamed slowing things down for the Hoyas. Patrick Ewing telling them to run their offense as they lead 5-2. to two. As Dante Harris step crossover shot off. A quick move, but a broke shot right there by the guard. Jones goes inside to Angenda. That one's tipped out of bounds by Holloway, and it'll be DePaul ball. Uh, Jalen for DePaul uh, struggles on the offensive side. They're on a 2-15 scoring drought. So Terry goes inside to Ungenda. He almost loses that one, able to get his, um, the ball back. Ungenda for two. That one's no good. Dante Harris soars for that off or for that defensive rebound. So Harris with the ball up top. Harris kicks it to Holloway for three. Holloway hits the three. Georgetown now on an 8-0 run. And what a start for the Hoya, seeking their first Big East win. Terry on the wing, goes, drives inside, kicks it to the corner. Johnson for three. That one's off rim. That one's going to be rebounded by Colin Holloway. Donald Carey, the graduate, will bring the ball up. It goes to the corner of Muhammad. Muhammad up top to Holloway. Holloway thought about it. He kept his pivot foot down, drives inside. He's swatted away by Nick on Gunda. Jalen Terry pushes the ball up. He drives inside. He can't finish it. Igo Ego Efe with the rebound. Goes back to Muhammad. It's nothing but fast-paced basketball as Muhammad drives in. That's off the rim. Jalen Terry with the defensive rebound, and DePaul has numbers. All the way to the corner. McCauley for three. That one's off. <laughs> and Muhammad secures the rebound. Patrick Ewing, and I think he's telling the players, and I think we need to slow down a little bit. Nothing but fast-paced action here so far. I can definitely look. <laughs> Jumping in on that, they are playing a very quick game of basketball right now. Um, you know, Georgetown is definitely pressuring um, DePaul yeah. a lot. Uh, it seems like they're trying to get them on edge, get them a little, you know, frustrated. Um, and I can definitely see it a little bit in their faces, but, you know, slowing that ball down a little bit on both ends is definitely going to allow them to set this ball up as best as they can, especially with Georgetown trying to gain that first Big East win for once. So 
it's definitely, we got a good game for sure. Yeah, both teams love to push that basketball up the court as Jalen Terry has the ball in the wing. He has nowhere to go. He has to throw it up. That's off the rim. David Jones with the offensive rebound, keeps his foot in bounds on the corner. Amino Muhammad on him. Jones drives inside a nice outlet pass to Anganda. Anganda can't finish. And Muhammad with the rebound. DePaul is cold from the field. Oh, of their last seven, they haven't scored since their first make, which was 440 ago. Dante Harris with the ball. Goes to his left. Uh, Muhammad back to Harris on the wing. Up top to Donald Carey. Carey with a three already in today's game. Muhammad sizes him up. Shoots a three. That's no good. Johnson with the rebound. Terry giving the ball. Will bring it up. Goes to Brandon Johnson. Johnson drives in. Agenda is blocked, but there is contact on the wrist. Nick Agenda tried to go forward to slam, but Colin Holloway grabs the wrist and makes a foul. So with that being said, we're going to go to a timeout. I, we need it. I'm sure they need it, and the viewers might need it as well. We, we'll be back in the GIF. Biking in Chicago is more than just a mode of transportation. It's a lifestyle. It's convenient, affordable, and with 13,000 bike racks, parking is never a problem. But with every reward comes a sidecar of risk. In Chicago, over 1,700 cyclists a year are killed or injured in bike accidents involving motor vehicles. Bike safety is simple. First, become familiar with Chicago bike laws. Know your hand signals and when to use them. Love your brain. Get a bike helmet that fits your noggin and deck it out with a headlamp and some reflective gear for riding at night. Bike at least three to four feet away from parked cars to avoid being struck by a car door being opened. Motorists can do their part, too, by checking their side view mirrors for bike traffic before exiting their vehicle. Most importantly, remember that we're sharing the road. Looking out for both ourselves and each other is the only way to keep Chicago's roads safe, no matter what your wheels look like. For more information on bike safety in Chicago, visit www.chicagobikes.org. This public service announcement was brought to you by Radio DePaul, Chicago's college connection. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes I do the same things over and over, until one day I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. But they also haven't scored in the last 235 both teams really cold out from the start, but especially DePaul. They made their first basket, but ever since then, they've missed their last eight, last eight, and they haven't scored in the last five minutes and seven seconds. Honestly, at this point, what I think that needs what needs to happen is they need to both teams need to slow the ball down. Um, I can the one thing that I did notice, and it's definitely going to be something that we're going to notice for the remainder of the night is, um, you know, Nick Ogenda and um, Timothy um, Egoefe, um, perfect size pairing. Oh, he is, Ogefe is definitely pressuring, pressing, sorry, um, Ogenda. And you can definitely see in his face that he is getting a little bit flustered because, you know, yeah. he has someone that's size matching him for sure. And it's definitely being able to keep up with him. It's very impressive to see the two stay head and head together on the um, on the court going both up and down no matter they always will meet each other at the basket so it's yep. going to be a good game for the rest of the night especially watching these two centers for to see what they do you know they yep. have to keep each other going they have to keep pu pushing one another and it, that goes for both teams to be honest yeah Angenda made his first free throw he makes a second he will be taking off for your and Timothy Goefe will be taken off for Ryan Mutumbo. And if that name does sound familiar, that is the son of the Georgetown legend and NBA legend, Diekme Mutumbo as well. So a little family history behind the Hoyas this year, as well as Jalen Billingsley will come in for Georgetown as Mina Muhammad loses that one. A steal 
by Johnson. Terry pushes the ball to court, eight to four. La Jolla's lead with 4.14 left in the first half. Johnson drives in, the floater is no good. Nice box out by Donald Carey. Dante Harris pushes the ball up the court. Terry on Harris, two promising young guards. Carey gives it off to Billingsley. Minu Mahan with the ball up top, leads the Hoyas in points and rebounds. Donald Carey, who was on that Big East championship team last year, handed it off to Harris. Harris thinks about it, goes inside. He is swat away from Johnson. But 6'2", Harris could not oversize a 6'10". Johnson, a nice pass right there by to Jalen Terry, and Patrick Ewing is upset. He's going to call himself a timeout. We're going to take a quick 30-second break and be right back. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Eight six, the Hoyas lead, a 4-0 run right now by DePaul. Georgetown shooting one of their last nine. Muhammad drives and spin move inside. He's fouled by Johnson. The freshman will head to the line for two free throws, Muhammad is in terms of ratings, the best prospect or recruit Patrick Ewing has gotten to land on his team. He is a five-star recruit. Uh, he chose the Hoyas over the likes of Georgia and Indiana University. So Georgetown blessed to get him. Muhammad is projected to be drafted if he were to enter the draft this year as Muhammad hits the first free throw. Uh, there haven't been any sayings on his plans yet. It'll be interesting to see what his ceiling is, if he wants to go right away or if he wants to play a couple years with the Hoyas as Muhammad makes the second one as the Hoyas now lead 10-6. But a very young Hoyas team. This is a Hoyas team that is filled with a lot of freshmen and sophomores. Uh, they lost about six players off last year's team. As Anae has it inside, Johnson drives inside, can't finish at 40 and one, but is fouled. It appears that is gonna be number three, Tyler Beard. He is Chicago's own attended Whitney Young High School, was a terrific basketball star there. He, um, after that, he took a prep year for a team, and then now he's here with the Hoyas. So, uh, Jalen, I think you gotta understand how big this is for him, playing in front of the family and the hometown. Hasn't played in front of the Chicago crowd for the Hoyas yet. Um, totally, look, when it comes down to, the one thing about college athletes playing in front of their hometown, mm -hmm. especially being from such a big city like Chicago. Chicago is one city that will represent their own no matter what sport you play in. So I totally get it. When you are back home, it means everything to you. Yeah, so Johnson goes one to two from the line. The Hoyas lead 10 to seven. Yeah, Beard was a three-star recruit coming out of high school. Attended a lot of the Georgetown DePaul games. He made that very evident in his social media posts. So this time he's going to be at the Winchester Arena in a Hoyas uniform. So Beard goes up top to Carey. Mikali almost steals that one, but Carey retrieves it up top. Uh, Muhammad with the ball goes up top to Carey. Carey a deep three. He hits that one. Swoosh from the grad student, the captain of the Hoyas. That's Carey's second three of the game. Bailey, 13 to seven. Johnson with the ball up top. Goes to Yori and Ney. Matumbo on him. Up top to McCauley. McCauley trying to repeat his 20 point performance from last game. He pulls up. He misses that. It's in and out. Matumbo with the rebound. Pushes it up to Carey. Carey goes to his left. He drives inside with the left hand. Off the glass and in for two. Donald Carey, eight points so far in the first half with 12, 17 left. And Georgetown responding very well after that timeout called by Patrick Ewing. With a team that's coming off of a not the best of season um, and not being able mm -hmm. to get a win um, on the road, yeah. they are pressing DePaul to really work. They are really pressing them at the basket. 
They're moving as a team. Like I said earlier, they are trusting one another with that ball. And you can just tell they're in every spot that they need to be in order to set this ball up um, and get this lead so far. And just like that, in that time of possessions, uh, there was misses by Yora Ney, Jalen Terry, and Amina Muhammad. So the score still stands at 15 7th, 11 33 left. Donald Carey drives inside, goes up top to Billingsley, inside to Mutumbo. That is off the hands of Ane, and we will have ourselves a media timeout. So Donald Carey so far, eight points, two to two from behind the arc, and the Oyas lead 15 to seven with 11.29 left. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in, say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Whoa, long time no see. It's me, the rock t-shirt in the back of your closet. Dude, remember? You crowd surfed in me, man. But you haven't worn me in like forever. I get it, you're retired, but I still got some rock left in me. So take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division One Big East coverage. Live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Back deal here alongside Jalen Hancock. The Georgetown Hoyas lead 15 to 7. You kind of touched on it earlier, Jalen. The Hoyas look really good out of the gate right now. And I think you kind of sense this urgency getting that first win. Now, out of the remaining schedule for the Hoyas, you figure that DePaul, this is probably one of their best chances to win a game. And you kind of can see that from the effort, from the energy they're bringing to the court right now, that they need to take advantage of tonight's game if they want to have at least one win in the Big East before the tournament. Honestly, the thing that they need to do right now, they're looking good, like you said, coming out the gate. Um, the one thing that I have noticed and have continued to notice is uh, Dante Harris, for him, he is like a fireball. He is coming <laughs> out of the gate. He's he's everywhere where yeah. you need him to be. If you if you're if the ball you know needs to be rebounded, he's there. If the big guy can't get it, he's gonna get it. And honestly, the effort is it's phenomenal to see. It's really interesting to know, see and to know that you know they haven't been able to get that win on the road. And it's like why not? Um, yeah. You know they're putting that pressure out on the floor. They are definitely letting DePaul know, well, hey, we are here to get that win. And if you want anything else otherwise, you're going to have to come get it. And right now, mm -hmm. you know, Georgetown is putting in that effort, and DePaul just has to fight for this win at this point. So we have two substitutions, Caden Rice for the Hoyas, Gieberwitt for DePaul Blue Demons, as Mutombo tries to go over a nay and hits that one. I don't know if his dad has that much of a range, but – Ryan Matumbo gets his first basket in. The Hoyas have their largest lead at 17 to seven. Well, I like what you mentioned about Dante Harris. He's a guy who came off the bench early last year, earned his starting position and became one of the bright spots. And he's gonna be still a bright spot. He has two more years left. So he's someone who Patrick Ewing has been very fond of. And he's definitely gonna have, I think he's gonna break a couple of records in the program. As David Jones shoots a three from the wing. That one's off. Caden Rice gets the rebound. And I'll tell you one thing about Caden Rice. If you love three-point shooting, Caden Rice is your guy. He has a similar archetype to, like, Clay Thompson. He'll shoot wherever, wherever you want, and he has a quick trigger. And we'll probably see that later in the game, but right now he does not have the ball. So Donald Carey in the corner. Step back. Oh, for three. He's fouled, and that's no good, but he will go to the free throw line. Four free three throws. And, I, Jalen, I think those are the fouls you cannot have down by 10. 
fouling a three-point shooter, a three-point shooter who has one of the best free throw percentages in the country at over 91%. DePaul just needs to slow down. That's, you know, they, I understand. They are very frantic. Um, you know, they have that urge, you know. I think yeah. they're used to, hey, we can get this win. Um, I can definitely say, and something that I've been seeing, not just in basketball, but college football is a good example. Mm -hmm. You don't know, just because they have a bad record does not mean they cannot beat you. Yeah. Um, you know, you had a team that beat Alabama. Yeah, I was going to say, that's and something we saw a lot in college bat football this year. Honestly, in NFL football as well, yeah. you don't know. I think sports is definitely, and you know, with basketball being a very popular sport mm -hmm. as well, it's a wild card. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what training they've been putting, the sweat, the blood, the tears, everything. And right now, jo Georgetown is definitely showing that on the court. They are showing we belong here. And... You know, it's showing. It's showing in the stats. It's showing in their effort, their teamwork, their sportsmanship. And as long as they can keep this up, maybe they might be able to go ahead yeah. and walk away, go right back, back home with this win on the road. Yeah. So Donald Carey goes two or three from the line. He misses a free throw, something that he does not do much. So the Hoyas lead 19-7. He's taken out of the game. Dante Harris is now back in the game. And uh, kind of a loose 2-3 zone by the Hoyas. But... And Gunner with the ball at the free throw line. Goes inside to Johnson. Billingsley on him. Goes inside on Billingsley. Billingsley with the, the I should say, the contested lay-in. That's off Matumbo, and it'll be DePaul basketball. Matumbo upset with that call. Uh, Patrick Ewing trying to tell Matumbo to, you know, just put your hands up better there. So Jalen Terry will pass the ball out. Goes up top to Johnson uh, to Angenda. Terry with the ball at top. Dante Aris on him. And McCauley now with the ball. Beard on him. McCauley drives inside. Spin move. Up and no good. Off the front rim. Angendo with the rebound. He is fouled by Mutombo. Angendo will go to the line for two free throws. But Jalen, if you're familiar with Patrick Ewing's collegiate career, an NBA career, he's one of the greatest big men in collegiate history and NBA history. And if you're a big man like Timothy Ugoefe, uh, Ryan Mutombo, and any other big men, you know, think about going to college for basketball, Who's better to learn under a guy like Patrick Ewing? Most, it, honestly, I feel like having someone with such a career like that, um, being able to have a name for themselves, there's no one else you can learn from. Um, you yeah. know, do what you got to do. It's very important when you're in that position, when you have such big shoes to fill, learn. As long as you're there, learn. Listen, take the criticism. Criticism is going to be an athlete's best friend. Yeah. You know, if you make a small mistake, hey, you know, with him being in the center, he was very, you can tell, very soft, very fragile. Mm -hmm. um, he's a very big guy, but definitely, uh, you know, as long as you can put that pressure in there, if you can just put a little bit more force mm -hmm. to keep Ogenda off of your back, you got to do that. Put your yeah. arms up, like you said. Instead of putting them out, put them up. That's yeah. the best that's the best advice you can get right now. Well, yeah, that foul worked out well as Angenda did miss both of those free throws. And now Timi Timothy Goefie will be get charged with an over-the-back foul. A little tongue twister there for me, but getting past it as Goefie is charged with the foul. So David Jones will come in for Phil Mongeberwit. Mohamed will come in for Beard. So the Hoyas leading 19-7. to seven. Patrick Wing, a, a player's coach, you could say. He's nonstop talking to his players on off the bench. You cannot get past Patrick Ewing when you sub out. <laughs> He's going to have at least a five-second word with you, no matter if you did good or bad. So Jalen Terry is fouled from behind by Dante Harris. That's um, the 15th foul by the Hoyas, so no one in the bonus yet. Georgetown is on 11-1 run in the last 5.53. Um, also important to notice, DePaul shooting 2 of 17 as Jones goes inside and lays that in for two. A big basket by the 6'6 guard, and it's now a 19-9 game, breaking a 9-0 run by the Hoyas. So Harris will bring the ball up. Rice with the ball. Goes to Mohammed on the wing. Mohammed drives inside. Inside on Kenda. He is swatted from behind. A nice steal or nice block by the big man. Terry pushes the ball to court. David Jones drives inside. He pulls up for two. That one's good. Four quick points right out of the gate for David Jones. And now the deficit is back to single digits, 19 to 11. And Georgetown is now on a cold spell. Harris up top to Holloway. Holloway drives inside. 
All the way stops. He goes inside on Johnson. Goes up for two. That one's no good. That's off the hands of Johnson. It'll be Hoya's basketball. But David Jones right off the bench. He was 0 for 2 on the day so far. Now he's 2 for 2 ever since he came back in. That's what you're going to need from DePaul. If someone's got to step up with Javon from Liberty out, with Javon Johnson out. It's going to have to be David Jones probably. He is the leading scorer on this team when you, you know, take those two out. He's averaging around 14.2 points a game as Harris goes to Rice in the corner. Rice, step back, three. That one is good. The sharpshooter, Caden Rice, 4-3. Caden Rice hit 10 threes in one game this year. That was on December 8th against UMBC, and right there continues his hot shooting with a nice-looking shot. Jones inside, one. Genda for the emphatic two-handed slam. Caught the big man, Ego Efe, sleeping. And DePaul takes advantage of that one as they trail 22-13. Harris now goes to Muhammad on the wing. Eight minutes left in this first half. Muhammad goes to his left inside to Genda. That one's no good. Ego Efe offensive rebound. Loses it on Genda with the steal. Terry pushes the ball up the court. Terry to the corner. McCauley goes up to the wing. Nowhere to go. Goes to Jones up top. Muhammad on him. Jones drives inside. That one is good. And Patrick Ewing calls a timeout. The Paul trims the lead by seven. It's 22 15. We're going to take a quick 30 and be right back. Welcome back to the dog show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Georgetown leads 22-15, but DePaul is getting hot. They are 4-4 from the field, and Jalen David Jones has made three of those four for the Blue Demons. They have done a good job coming back in this game after what was a media timeout, what we're in now, but the last media timeout, uh, DePaul has been able to come back out of it, and here they are, only down by seven. David Jones, um, you know, definitely, he, he definitely took the advantage that he saw and ran with it. It's definitely been impressive the last, over the last course, I believe, the last four minutes, watching him, he went, Instead of, you know, let me look to see who's open, I'm just going to go ahead and attack, and it has definitely been successful um, each time. You know, he's picking up the weight for the team right now, and, you know, teamwork is teamwork, however, but if you see that opportunity, you're going to take it, and it's a good opportunity that he's taken. He's been able to score, I believe, the last six points, if I'm not mistaken, for DePaul Blue Demon. So, you know, it's very, it's going to be a very good game if he keeps this up. Um, and then same thing with Georgetown, though. Georgetown is still going to press um, now that they know that DePaul is going to be on their heels. As long as they can keep this pace, maybe DePaul can come back and grab this. But right now, like you said earlier, um, when you come off the floor and you're about to go to the bench, that five seconds of criticism that's going to come towards you, no matter if it's good or bad, that five seconds can change the next time that they're out on the field. Um, out here on the court, you know, you don't know what he told yeah. him in the last five seconds. So it's important to take that criticism, sit, you know, turn it a little bit, think about it, and then come back out on the court, and you're going to be full force. You don't, you yeah. know, it's it's working in their favor for sure. But the Pauls definitely, I think, they've met their match. Um, and, you know, that's a good thing sometimes. Sometimes you need the pressure to be better, to do better. So Yeah, for Georgetown. They're shooting hot. They're four or five from the three-point line. They're shooting at 80%, but they have only have two makes inside the paint. They are getting, you know, they're getting dominated when it's on the offensive side of the ball, uh, but that's a credit also to the Paul. They have three blocks and two steals. Um, they have really made it hard for the Hoyas to drive inside. So Donald Carey will come back in the game for Caden Rice. 
So Dante Harris now bringing the ball up. 7.35 left in the first half. Harris goes to his left. Carey with it on the wing, back to Harris. Carey leads the team with 10 points. Iris with a quick move, goes to Holloway. Holloway up top to Harris. Harris to his left. Harris, two. That one is good. The quick move by number two. And that's his first points of the game. Now you said, Jalen, he's a firecracker. He's and a right dude. there, Jalen Terry had trouble keeping up with him. Harris and is definitely a very calm and consistent player on the court. He runs up the court like a fire, you know, like a firecracker. Yeah. He stands there and you don't know his next move. You have to keep your eyes on him. If you don't, he can definitely smooth right past you to into that basket. Um, you know, that's one of the advantages of being a player like, you know, an athlete like him, mm -hmm. um, being full force. You, you need those yeah. type of athletes on your team. You got to imagine the type of experience he was able to gain in that Big East tournament against teams like Villanova, Seton Hall, Creighton. As Ongandas loses that one, Muhammad almost travels, gives it off to Harris. So Harris goes up top to Carey. Carey two for two from the three-point line tonight. Carey goes to his right off the screen of Billingsley. Bill inside the Billingsley, that one is retrieved by Muhammad. That's going to be off the foot of Ongenda. No kickball violation. David Jones drives inside. He is off and Jones comes from behind and tips that one in and trims the lead 24-17 and Ewing goes to his bench he's going to bring Malcolm Wilson to the media timeout you can see Georgetown getting outsized right now as Harris goes to his right up top to Carey Carey for two Carey is off gets his own rebound and he loses that one on Genda with the rebound only Dante Harris there and on Genda lays that in and DePaul now only trails by five, 24-19, six minutes and counting. The Hoyas have been unable to finish inside, and DePaul has done a good job of taking advantage of that. Muhammad almost loses it there. Back to Carey. Carey drives inside, kicks it to Muhammad. Muhammad, spin move, nowhere to go. And that one is away from Harris, and that's a terrible pass by the freshman. And just like that, DePaul can make this a one possession game with a score here. And Malcolm Wilson will check in for the first time. He comes in for Ryan Mutumbo. So the third center to check in for the Hoyas. Billingsley on Johnson, Wilson on Angunda, Harris on Terry, Muhammad on Jones, Her Carey on Gieberwitt. David Jones drives inside, goes all the way across to Terry. Terry for three. That one's good by the sophomore. And uh, Paul is hot. They have made seven of their last eight. They are on a 7-0 run. And just like that, the Hoyas only lead 24-22. Harris goes to Carey. That one's tipped. No backcourt violation. Carey brings the ball up. He is fouled from behind. Gieberwitt with the reaching call. That with DePaul being on such a good streak so far, this is not the time to get any fouls, especially with the type of heat that Georgetown and the, you know, with them bringing the heat onto the floor, I think the best thing that they can do right now is to lay off of the fouls. You know, there are fouls that are mistakes and there's fouls that, you know, that can be avoided. And right now that foul definitely could have been avoided. Just slow it down a little bit. Uh, Donald Carey with the ball up top. Goes to Harris. Georgetown cannot find anything inside as Carey goes to his left. Inside to Wilson. Wilson, he's blocked. Jones with the rebound. Jones brings the ball up the court. DePaul can tie the game or take the lead. Up top to Terry. Terry goes to the corner of Johnson. Johnson drives inside, kicks it out to Jones. Jones drives the baseline. The mid-range two is good, and it's a tie game here at the Wind Trust Arena. A 9-0 run by the Blue Demons. Ewing and the Hoyas are struggling to find anything. It's 24-24, 4-20 left. Harris drives inside to Wilson. That's a slam dunk for two. And Georgetown gets their first points in the last two minutes and 50 seconds. A big time finish by number 32. Jones on the wing. Jones for three. Jones is off. McCauley with the offensive rebound. Muhammad tried to rip that away. Johnson goes to McCauley in the wing. 
McCauley drives inside, spin move off the glass. That's blocked from behind. That's going to be a foul. The question is, who is it on? Could be Billingsley, might be Wilson. They're going to charge that foul on. Wilson, so that will be Malcolm Wilson. It's going to be two free throws for McCauley, and we're going to go to a media timeout, so we'll be back in a little bit. Biking in Chicago is more than just a mode of transportation. It's a lifestyle. It's convenient, affordable, and with 13,000 bike racks, parking is never a problem. But with every reward comes a sidecar of risk. In Chicago, over 1,700 cyclists a year are killed or injured in bike accidents involving motor vehicles. Bike safety is simple. First, become familiar with Chicago bike laws. Know your hand signals and when to use them. Love your brain. Get a bike helmet that fits your noggin and deck it out with a headlamp and some reflective gear for riding at night. Bike at least three to four feet away from parked cars to avoid being struck by a car door being opened. Motorists can do their part, too, by checking their side view mirrors for bike traffic before exiting their vehicle. Most importantly, remember that we're sharing the road. Looking out for both ourselves and each other is the only way to keep Chicago's roads safe, no matter what your wheels look like. For more information on bike safety in Chicago, visit www.chicagobikes.org. This public service announcement was brought to you by Radio DePaul, Chicago's college connection. I don't recycle. I mean, we can just find another planet for your kids to live on, you know? Noted non-recycler Tom. Tommy Crenshaw talks about the future. Oh, I can totally see finding another planet that can support life when ours fills up with trash. Log on to yougottobekidding.org and learn about all the ways you can recycle, unless you're into lame excuses like Tommy's. Hey, recycling's just not my thing. Starting over on a new planet? Now that's exciting. Don't be that guy, unless you want people looking at you funny. Log on to yougottobekidding.org. You're listening to Division I Big East Coverage. Live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Six twenty-four, Georgetown leads, but the DePaul Blue Demons right back in this game. Jalen, it was once uh, nineteen to seven, Georgetown, and DePaul, especially David Jones and Jalen Terry have brought this one back. It was just a tie game moments ago. McCauley will be going to the line for two free throws, but Georgetown seems to be in a bit of trouble as DePaul is heating up from the floor. I think for the last 30, for the last three minutes, 39 seconds, the best thing that both these teams need to do is they need to regroup. They need to reevaluate the situation that they're in. You know, it's only three minutes left on the clock. So slow it down. Watch, because the last, before we just went on that um, timeout, they were toppling on top of each other. It was very... It was stacked. It was very clustered. You know, they were playing a fast ball, and sometimes you just need to slow it down. It's nothing is wrong with slowing down the ball. So McCauley hits his first free throw. He trims that deficit now back to one. DePaul hasn't led since it was two to nothing with 19:42 left in the first half. So McCauley's second free throw, no good. Wilson with the rebound, hands it off to Carey. Caden Rice now checks in for the Hoyas as well. Harris brings the ball up. Harris can't find anywhere to go. Goes to Carey in the corner. Goes to Muhammad on the baseline. Muhammad drives inside. Pulls up for two. That one's off. Wilson tries to get the offensive rebound. Caden Rice does. He pulls up for three. That one's no good. David Jones with the rebound. DePaul with a chance to take the lead. Jones goes to the corner. McCauley for three. McCauley is no good. When trust Arena would have been on their feet if that one would have fell through. But Dante Harris quickly pushes it up the court. Harris drives inside, goes to the baseline. Colin Howell, or Carey for three. That one's good. That's three threes for the grad student. And he's three of three from the field as well. So that's 13 points. They're actually going to call that a two. 
from Carey. So no three. That's a two-pointer. It'll be 28-25 with 2.47 left. I'm going to send him a callie. He is blocked from behind. It's going to be a foul on Wilson. So Harris did block the ball. He got all ball. But the initiated contact came from the side, looked like the right side of McCauley, which was Malcolm Wilson. Like I said earlier, slowing the ball down, slow, I think just slowing their entire atmosphere down, you know, being able to communicate on the court with each other. It doesn't have to be verbally. Um, it can just be, you know, body language, being able to, you know, trust each other. I feel like right now they're just kind of doing a free-for-all. Um, you know, that's... Hey, you can do that as well, but in a situation like this, it's very critical for the Hoyas to, you know, be able to secure an on-the-road win. But it's also very important for DePaul to keep up, um, you know, their season so far, keep yep. it looking great. So, yeah, McCauley goes two to two from the line, 28-27, 2:30 left. Harris goes quickly to his right, hands it off to Carey, Carey up top to Rice. Rice thought about to the passing it to the cutting Muhammad, kept it to himself. Rice pulls up for three. Rice hits the three. The sniper, Caden Rice, hits his second three of the game. And the Hoyas extend their lead to four, 31-27. Inside to Angenda at the free throw line. Malcolm Wilson on him. Angenda pulls up for two. Angenda's two is no good. Carey. Pulls it to the rice. Ball is going all over the place. That's off on Genda. Georgetown basketball. A lot of bodies in the floor. A lot of hands touching the basketball. This is Big East basketball here on Wednesday night. So Harris brings the ball up. A guard who was from the, the uh, District of Columbia area, his dad moved into Tennessee for a better chance to be recruited, and he lands up in the District of Columbia at Georgetown as Muhammad drives in. Oh, he's swatted away by Jones. Jones saves it in the corner, gives it to Terry. Terry pulls up for three. Terry hits the three. The Flint, Michigan sophomore, Jalen Terry, Hits his second three of the game, and it's back to a one-point game. 31-30, 1.22 left. Definitely jumping into what I was saying before, having a huge agenda, having good matchups. Terry definitely has a good matchup as well with Harris. They're both very quick. They're both very attentive with one another, no matter which direction they're mm -hmm. moving on the court. And definitely when it comes to... Um, you know, playing against one another, it's just very interesting. They have, they're another pair. They've met their match seriously. And it's a very good game to watch with these two on the court with one another. Yeah, so that was a bad pass from uh, Nick on Gendo over the head of McCauley. So Georgetown retains the ball with a minute and counting left. Harris goes to his right, up top to carry, to the corner of Muhammad. Muhammad, oh, and he took too many steps with that one. Forgot his luggage, but has, didn't dribble the basketball with that one. And just like that, a turnover by the Hoyas. That's Muhammad's four turnover. He is responsible for four of the six Hoya turnovers. And now DePaul, once again, a chance here to take the lead. So McCauley with the ball in the wing. Johnson inside. Rice on him. Johnson goes inside. He goes up. He's blocked from Wilson. It's Muhammad with the rebound. Carey pushes the ball up inside to Wilson. A steal by McCauley. And Rice fouls him from behind, and McCauley will go to the line for one and one free throws. And McCauley is a little shaken up after that fall. Nothing intentional. Rice tried to go for it, and possibly maybe some cramps right there for McCauley. Hey, look, that's what we call teamwork. <laughs> you got a cramp? Can you stretch it out for me? And that's so, what David Jones is doing right now. <laughs> As long as we don't have an injury, but hey, it was definitely a good call from the ref, um, making sure, you know, calling the right call, getting that call in, and then possibly getting him on the line for those two free throws. Yeah, interesting here, DePaul is not with their coach at all, but the Hoyas are all huddled by Patrick Ewing, kind of like a timeout used in a way. So with 35 seconds left and 30 seconds left on the shot clock, McCauley still has a one-on-one -on -one free throws. Georgetown will have a chance for one more offensive possession. What it looks like to me is he probably caught a cramp, if not a Charlie horse. You know, back of his legs red, you know, keeping it stiff as a former athlete. 
definitely looks like it caught a Charlie horse. So stretch it out and then come back on the court and should be all fine and dandy, ready to go. Yeah, so we're going to stay right here as that's going to be a DePaul timeout just to give McCauley a chance to kind of rehab that injury a little bit as the Hoyas lead here. 31 to 30, they are led by the duo of Caden Rice and Donald Carey, combining for 18 points and four of five from the three point line. And for the Blue Demons, they are led by David Jones, four of eight from the field, and Jalen Terry, who is two of four from the three point line. The Hoyas are shooting 36 from the field, 63 from the three point line, 86 from the free throw line. DePaul is shooting 34% from the field, 18% from the three point line and 60% from the free throw line. Both teams around 20 rebounds. Hoyas with seven turnovers. DePaul with four turnovers. It's a back and forth game. 35.8 exact left on the clock. McCauley here shooting one and one. Ego F.A. checks in. Callies free throw is no good. So Georgetown's going to have a five second second difference between the play clock and shot clock. The ball will have a chance to get another the ball again, but Georgetown can really hold this down to five four seconds. Uh, really give the you know kind of a long shot of getting that um, offensive possession. As you can see right here, Dante Harris dribbling back and forth and taking his time. Goes to Donald Carey. There's five seconds left on the shot clock. Donald Carey's going to have to throw something up. Three seconds left. He throws it up for three. He is off. David Jones with the rebound. Two seconds left. He throws it up. That one is way off. And that will be the end of the first half. The Georgetown Hoyas lead 31-30, but the DePaul Blue Demons have made this a close game. Brandon's going to take it back in the studio. We'll be back in 15 minutes. Stay tuned, everybody. An exciting second half of collegiate basketball here on Wednesday night in the Windy City. The Georgetown Hoyas lead 31-30. Jacksonville here alongside Jalen Hancock. Uh, the Hoyas will start off the second half with the ball. Both teams were able to have their types of runs. The Hoyas, they were up 19-7 once in the first half. And DePaul has made this once a close game as Ego F.A. lose that one. Harris, corner, three. No, good. Muhammad with the offensive rebound. That's blocked by Terry. Holloway with an offensive rebound. Quick action right out of the gate for the Hoyas as Harris drives inside. He goes in to Ego Efe, and the shot clock violation goes off. And good defense right out of the half for the Blue Demons. The one thing that we're definitely going to watch um, this, this uh, second half um, is like you mentioned earlier, Muhammad and his turnovers for the Hoyas. In addition, we're also going to watch um, between uh, DePaul's Terry and um, the Hoyas Harris. Um, you know, they're definitely going hand in hand with each other. And then, you know, as well, we're going to watch um, Nick Ogenda and Io Guefe. So this is definitely going to be an interesting second half of the game considering the first half that we did have. It was definitely a very strong first half that we did have. So very, um, you know, excited to see what we got in store for the second half of the game. Yeah, so at 1929 after that shot clock violation, we have ourselves an official review, um, maybe possibly checking if any time ran off the uh, play clock. Uh, or maybe the ball hit the rim by any chance. Um, they are reviewing this play. It should be the Paul basketball unless something foreseen happened that we did not see. But yeah, like you said, Muhammad, he's 0 of 8 from the field. He has five turnovers, six rebounds, four points. He's been really out of control when it comes to driving inside the paint so far. Um, so re officials are still reviewing this one here at the Wintrust Arena. Uh, Jack Field alongside Jalen Hancock, of course, and we have Brandon Bowens back in the studio. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to tonight's game. Uh, Georgetown trying to get their first Big East win, their 0-10, which is a program worse. And Nepal trying to start their first Big East win streak in two years. Uh, they beat Xavier, and it looks like it's going to be Georgetown basketball with nine seconds left on the shot clock. So apparently the ball did hit the rim. And that's going to allow Georgetown to regain possession. And Dante Harris will pass this one out with nine seconds left. So Paul did not force a shot clock violation just yet. Hoyas still have a chance here to score on their first possession. 
So Harris passes out, goes to Eagle FA in the corner, FA back to Holloway on the wing. Carey on the wing, corner three, Carey. That one's off, Eagle FA offensive rebound, fight for the ball and Gibrowit is able to get that one. Terry now with the basketball, goes to Gibrowit on the wing. Gibrowit thought about a three, goes inside to Angenda, all the way across to Johnson. Johnson's wide open for three. Johnson hits the three and DePaul has their first lead since two to nothing and the Blue Demons are getting hotter and hotter as the game has gone ever since Georgetown led 19 to seven. Carry off the screen to Ego Efe. That one's tipped by Angenda. Johnson pushes it to Jones. Jones drives inside. Euro step off the glass and in for two. David Jones brings his luggage and passport with that Euro step. And Patrick Ewing calls time out as the Blue Demons start right out of the gate. A 5 0 run, and they lead 35 31. We're going to take a quick 30 second timeout and be right back. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Turn of events here at the Wind Trust Arena. Georgetown with a huge lead, now the Blue Demons lead, 35-31. DePaul on a 5-0 run to start off this second half, courtesy of uh, Brandon Johnson, three, and David Jones, Euro step two. Jalen, it seems like this game is kind of getting away from the Hoyas. They have eight turnovers, and only five of their shots have been made inside the paint. So DePaul led by David Jones, 10. Brandon Johnson with eight. Jalen Terry with eight. Nick Angenda with six. For the Hoyas, Donald Carey with 12. Dante Harris with two. Colin Holloway with three. Muhammad with four. And Ego Efe with zero. So it's been a tough stretch for Georgetown ever since they led 19 to uh, seven. It's been a, I believe, a 12, it's going to be a 28 and 12 run for DePaul. I had to do some math real quick. 28 uh, 12 run for DePaul since the 10 35 mark in the first half. And right now, uh, the fans are getting into it, and I feel like a lot of momentum is on the DePaul side right now. I think the best thing that we can see from both teams, especially with DePaul, um, the one thing that I'm noticing on the sideline is that the Royals are getting a lot of lots of attention from their coach getting, you know, I don't know exactly what they're talking about on the sideline, but every single coach, no matter if there's their head coach, assistant coach, is talking amongst all of their players. And it seems like, you know, DePaul might, you know, they can need that, they might need that a little bit. Um, just having that motivation, being able to trust each other on the court, because um, you can see there's a lot there's a lack of communication. Yeah. Everyone's just toppled on top of each other. A lot of looking around, not knowing where the ball is. So yeah. that is something small that we can change uh, when it comes to the second half of the game. Yeah, I'm sure there's a not have been a lot of nice things that Patrick Ewing has been telling his team in the last 10 minutes. Uh, you know, we talked about how Georgetown is desperate for that first Big East win. You know, having that big lead, you know, having all that momentum, and now have it all to DePaul's side. You know, Ewing, Luis Orr, and um, just coaches for Georgetown, I'm sure that they probably can't have too much to say right now. You know, I'm sure they're really upset with their team's performance in the last couple of minutes. So Harris will pass the ball out, goes to Carey in the corner. Carey brings the ball back up, settles things down, goes to Harris. 
Harris goes up top, goes to his right, goes back to his left. Kicks it out to Holloway. Holloway goes to Harris in the corner. Johnson on him. Harris inside, actually goes to the corner. Muhammad, Muhammad for three. Muhammad is off. Holloway with the offensive rebound. Dante Harris, he fakes his shot. Step back two. That one is good from the sophomore guard in that huge bucket for the Hoyas. Their first points of the second half. And now the lead is two, 35-33 with 17.50 for the Blue Demons. Johnson now with the ball top. Goes inside to Gieberwitt. Carry on Gieberwitt. On Genda, the mid-range two. That one's good. The big man steps right outside the paint and drills a nice-looking two. 37-33. Harris off the screen. Harris thought about going inside to Mutombo. Inside to Mutombo it is, and that is just a off pass, and it hits someone's camera. Hopefully that camera is all right. But uh, ill-advised and too much strength on that pass from Colin Holloway as Holloway is taken out, and Caden Rice, who almost came out, came in with his warm-up shirt, <laughs> is going to come in for Colin Holloway. So Georgetown looking for some more three-point shooting. They're 5 of 12, which is 41% from the three-point line. The majority of their points have come from that three-point line. So Johnson with the ball up top goes to Nganganda. Nganganda drives inside, goes up top to Jones. Jones gives a little shoulder check to Muhammad. Muhammad on him, almost stole that one. Terry gets the ball now. Terry goes to his right on the wing. Terry goes all the way across to Gieberwitt. Gieberwitt goes to his right inside, kicks it, and that one... Jones almost lost it. Harris came out of nowhere and just tipped it out of bounds like a, I guess I should say your word, like a firecracker, yeah. Jalen. <laughs> like a firecracker, Jalen. Like I said, <laughs> Harris is where you need him to be at every given moment on this court. Um, you know, he started on one side and found his way on the other. Mm -hmm. So, you yep. know, he's definitely a team player. He definitely is trying to get that job done. Um, and, you know, that's just the important part of just being a team player. He's where you need him to be. If you need him to be on one side of the court, he's going to be there. You don't need to communicate that with him. He will follow that ball wherever you need it to go. Georgetown will have the ball on the baseline after a tip pass. Caden Rice for three. Caden Rice hits the three. His third tray of the game, and Georgetown trails by one. Jalen's becoming a danger zone here on the baseline in the last two minutes. We've had two basketballs come our way. All right, now DePaul trying to you know, keep that lead that they just regained. As Angenda has it up top, goes to Terry. Johnson cuts inside. That's going to be a foul on the floor. It's going to be on up here. That's Caden Rice. Actually, that's Donald Carey. That would be his first foul. Inside the Gieber with Gieber with thought about it, turns his back on Carey. Carey with a big, the stout defense as Gieber would give him a shoulder. Johnson for a pull up three. That's no good. Johnson tried to kind of shoot, not an Illivai shot, but something that you probably don't want to see. And Johnson gets a steal on the other side, goes inside. Terry in the corner. That's an offensive foul. Donald Carey sets up a charge. He had Jalen Terry wide open in the corner, but Johnson goes too far. And heads up defense by the grad student of Donald Carey, the captain of this Georgetown team, to set his feet and take the contact. Now it will be Georgetown basketball with 6'10", 37-36 day trail. DePaul, they started hot. They've had a little bit of a cold spell in the last possessions. Harris with the ball on the wing. Gieberwitt on him. Harris trying to go to inside of Matumbo and kind of doing a good job on him. Harris kicks it out. Keaton Rice for three. Keaton Rice is fouled and hits the three. The fourth three of the game for the sharpshooter, Caden Rice, and he will go to the line for an and one free throw. We're going to go to a quick break and see if Caden Rice can complete the four-point play. Today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council.
Biking in Chicago is more than just a mode of transportation. It's a lifestyle. It's convenient, affordable, and with 13,000 bike racks, parking is never a problem. But with every reward comes a sidecar of risk. In Chicago, over 1,700 cyclists a year are killed or injured in bike accidents involving motor vehicles. Bike safety is simple. First, become familiar with Chicago bike laws. Know your hand signals and when to use them. Love your brain. Get a bike helmet that fits your noggin. And deck it out with a headlamp and some reflective gear for riding at night. Bike at least three to four feet away from parked cars to avoid being struck by a car door being opened. Motorists can do their part, too, by checking their side view mirrors for bike traffic before exiting their vehicle. Most importantly, remember that we're sharing the road. Looking out for both ourselves and each other is the only way to keep Chicago's roads safe, no matter what your wheels look like. For more information on bike safety in Chicago, visit www.chicagobikes.org. This public service announcement was brought to you by Radio DePaul, Chicago's college connection. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Nine thirty-seven in Georgetown, Hoyas lead, and you know, in my little pregame spiel, I said Patrick Ewing in a basketball arena on a Wednesday night in Chicago. It must be the nineties. But we also have Diekme Mutombo here. He is sitting courtside um, actively on his feet, telling the Hoyas to get into it. So we have not just one, but two that I know of here, uh, Hall of Fame basketball players, but Jalen Caden Rice. He has had a hot start to this second half. Right on the bench, the Hoyas were trailing. Uh, he, has two, uh, he has the two last threes made for this team. He has four threes made overall, and this is a 6-0 run in the last minute all courtesy of number 11, Caden Rice. Definitely. You know, the Hoyas are relying heavily on the the three-point line, um, especially with Caden Rice uh, making four four out of the five threes so far that he has attempted. Um, And another thing that's been noticed, you know, like I said before, with the Hoyas relying on the three-point line, DePaul is also playing within the three-point line. So I definitely think it's different when it comes to the scope of how they're playing, how both of these teams are playing with the Hoyos also shooting for almost 50% um, from the three-point line. So it's definitely a different style of um, basketball that they're playing. Um, And it's very interesting to see because, you know, if one's playing from three, one's playing within the three, you're going to get a different skill set. You're going to get a different uh, momentum when it comes to that. So Yeah, there's the saying, live or die by the three-point line, and the Hoyos are living right now. So Caden Rice, a chance here to complete the elusive four-point play. And he can't, but uh, Muhammad with the offensive rebound and tips it in. So instead of a four-point play, it turned into a five-point play. Dante Harris with the steal. The heads-up awareness by the sophomore. Dante Harris goes to Matumbo for the slam. And just like that, almost a seven-point swing. And the Hoyas now lead by six. What a turnaround. Inside to Gieberwitt. Gieberwitt inside. That's good over to... Um, extending hand of Mutombo and it is 43-39 Hoyas 15-20 oh man the Hoyas came right out of the gate on that timeout the one thing that I'm noticing about Harris is he's communicating with his eyes when it comes across Mm -hmm. communicating with his um, teammates across the court firecracker yeah and I mean he had that steal DePaul was sleeping and that's going to be a Georgetown steal. And there's the firecracker, Dante yes. Harris, diving on the ground for the ball. It's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to be the Paul ball. But, man, Jalen, I mean, you're right on it. He is just elusive. There. He's quick. <laughs> Gus Johnson, who does play-by-play for Fox, called him Allen Iverson-like. Not Allen Iverson, but he's got the quickness of AI, who is another Georgetown legend. And he, 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 has, no, he has no stamina bar. He's just going to go and go until this one's over. So the Paul trails, 43-39. They have the ball with 14-47 left. And Genda up top with it goes to Gieberwitt. Gieberwitt up top to McCauley. McCauley's quiet after a, a career game for him. He has zero point or three points. So Terry now at the wing. Four seconds left on the shot clock. Terry, a deep three. He has to throw it up off the back rim. No good. Johnson tips it to Caden Rice. So Caden Wright will push that one. Goes to Muhammad on the baseline. Muhammad pull up two. 
That one's good from the freshman, Amino Muhammad. A big shot for him who was struggling from the field, able to record his eighth point of the game. And the Hoyas are on a 12-2 run over the last two minutes and 29 seconds. So McCauley with the ball on the wing. Caden Rice on him. Goes up top to Johnson. Muhammad on him. Dante Harris on Terry. Terry with the ball. Terry goes to his right. All the way across McCauley. McCauley thought about the three. Takes a step left. He does shoot the three. And he hits the three. Corvissier, McCauley. Nothing but a swoosh. 45-42. The Blue Demons still trail. 13-35 left. Colley now six points in the game. Carey with the ball up top. Dante Harris drives inside. He thought about it. Goes to Caden Rice in the corner. McCauley on Rice. Rice drives inside. Something you don't really see from Rice that often. Matumbo pulls up for two. Matumbo's is in and out. Muhammad with the offensive rebound. That one no good. Matumbo tries to get the rebound. Muhammad with the rebound. Muhammad pushes up the carry up top. Carey thought about the three. He slows things down. And 13 seconds left remain on the shot clock. Carey drives in inside to Mutumbo, off the glass, and the contact. Ryan Mutumbo lets them know as he is going to the line for a three-point play. Definitely the Demons and the Hoyas could have slowed that down a little bit better um, when it comes to just how they were playing. You know, once the momentum, they got into their momentum, they got really excited and just slowing that down a little bit, so... I mean, you were, we were right there. Matumbo, Ryan Matumbo, <laughs> he was excited for that lane right there. He let that one out. Yes, and, and then, <laughs> you know, jumping back to Harris, too. You know, he's right now on the sideline getting fixed up by the trainer. A little bloody knee. You know, like we were saying, with him being a firecracker, I saw it from across the court. He had blood dripping down his leg, you know, pushing through the pain. Those yeah. are the type of athletes mm -hmm. that you would want on your team, especially one on the court, and it's b good for both teams. Um, you have a good component to play against. Um, you know, he's a good player to play against, and he's also a good player to play with. So he's definitely having a good game so far. So Ryan Matumbo fails to complete the three-point play. Oyo's lead, 47-42, 13 minutes and counting in this second half. Two of the bottom feeders in the Big East, but this has been nothing but an, an instant classic. And we still have 13, or I should say 12.50 now left to go. As Johnson drives in, that's a reach and foul on Aminu Muhammad. That's going to be his first foul. <laughs> but, you know, Jalen, as a collegiate athlete, and as, um, you know, I kind of, I don't know if you can kind of relate to this or talk about this, but, you know, having a father that's very well known, you know, how, how hard can that be? Trying to create your own legacy, but trying to, you know, not stay in your father's shadows as Ane hits that floor too, specific, specifically for Matumbo. Because when you think of Ryan Mutombo, you're going to think of Diekme Mutombo, mm -hmm. his father, who is an NBA legend, as Terry with the ball goes inside to David Jones. He's fouled by Mutombo, and David Jones completes the, or I should say he gets the foul and the shot and will try to complete the three-point play. But going back to you, Jalen, you know, as a collegiate athlete, being at such a young age, how do you kind of progress through that if, you know, you have a famous family figure, especially in the same college you went to? Honestly, you know, the best way that I can describe it is in order to make yourself, you know, come out of your parents' image, you need to have your own image. And down at Iowa, you know, my parents didn't go to Iowa. My dad ran track at Oklahoma State. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. You need to do what you need to do for yourself. And, you know, down at yeah. Iowa, perfect example, um, the McCaffreys. Uh, you have yeah. the McCaffrey family plays, you know, basketball. The head coach, um, Coach McCaffrey, his two sons also play there. You know, they kind of have to find an image themselves. And his oldest son actually, um, you know, plays basketball and baseball at DePaul, uh, not DePaul, at Iowa. So that is him, I believe, you know, getting that own image of for himself. So it's really just how you decide to do it. If you want to stay in your parents' footsteps footsteps and shadow, I mean, that's kind of on you. But at the end of the day, you need to do what you need to do to come out of that. That's with anyone that has a famous mm -hmm. parent. Um, Kobe Bryant is a good one um, when we're looking at um, professional ball. Um, you know, if we're using LeBron James as an example as well, Bronny. his sons, yeah. you know, they have to make their own image. It's really 
yes, your parents are going to be well known, but it's you want to be known. Your parents aren't going to be yeah. <laughs> the ones playing in college oh, yeah. when you go to college. So yeah. I think the best way to do it is just find a sense of self, um, you know, work really hard. Just You just got to kind of block it out. It's really hard to, but mm -hmm. if you can block it out, hey, you should be fine. Yep. So David Jones hit that and one free throw, which tied the game. McCauley's at the line for two free throws. He hit the first one, and he hits both of them. And the Paul Blue Demons regain their lead at 49-47 with 12 minutes left. Georgetown, who came out of the gates, was up um, lately by six. DePaul now on a 7-0 run. And Dante Harris has the ball on the wing. A mismatch down low. Terry on Aminu Muhammad. Muhammad drives inside on his right. Go spin move left. Oh, what a move off the glass and good. The trickery by the freshman and ties the game at 49. Back and forth we go. You know, with looking at the Hoyas, just their hustle, their hustle mm -hmm. player for sure is going to be Harris. Yeah. He hustles every single time, and, you know, that's not a bad thing. But when it comes to these second chance points that the Hoyas are also getting off of DePaul, that's going to be very critical for them, mm -hmm. especially with the remaining 11 minutes that we have of the second half. So. You know, they kind of got to get it together. They got to close those gaps. They got to keep any second chance that the Hoyos can get from scoring any points, especially off of that free throw line. Yep. So David Jones drives in, and he hits it off the glass for two. And DePaul regains the lead, 51-49. Could have been a foul call there, but nothing was whistled. Dante Harris with the ball. Off the screen of Rice. Harris drives inside. That one swatted away by Yorane. The center says, not in my house tonight. And McCauley for three. He hits the three. And the Blue Demons lead by five. Their largest lead of the game so far tonight. Harris goes to Beard. Rice on the wing. Rice up top. Muhammad now on the wing. Uses the screen of Rice. Muhammad almost loses that. Spin move Muhammad. Goes inside. Step back two. That one's no good. Wilson can't tip that one back in. Terry with the rebound. Terry thought about that. David Jones pulls up for three. And it's good. Nothing but nylon for the 6-6 six, six guard. And it's now an eight-point lead for the Blue Demons, 57 49, 940 left in Georgetown. They need some answers very quickly as Harris has the ball inside to Muhammad. Muhammad inside. He's had trouble there all day. He loses the ball. McCauley with the steal. McCauley pushes it to Terry. Alley-oop, and he can't finish it. David Jones almost finishes the alley-oop. Dante Harris drives up. That one to Muhammad. Muhammad thought about it. He holds it. Harris in the corner now. Harris drives inside. Off and no good. Johnson with the rebound. And the Hoyas are cold. They're one of their last eight. They haven't scored in the last 239. On the other hand, DePaul is on a 15-0 run over, or 15-2 run over the last 340. And six of their last eight made field goals. You know, DePaul is definitely, I think they found their rhythm. They're doing fantastic. And right there, Corvisier. McCauley yes. hits another three and it's now an 11 point lead for the DePaul Blue Demons and they are on their feet here in the Win Trust Arena. We're going to go to a media timeout and be right back. Rich Please, is just a really, oh, really, really good guy. The term good egg isn't enough to describe him. He's also certified organic and free range. Rich puts the cap back on everything. The toothpaste, the olive oil, the shampoo, everything. He lets his 10-year-old nephew beat him at virtual tennis, even though he can straight up slay his 10-year-old nephew in virtual tennis. When the toilet paper is running low, Rich replaces the roll on the actual holder, not just on the back of the toilet. Rich is texting and driving. Rich, no, what are you doing, Rich? I was just telling everyone how great you are. 
texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes, I did the same things over and over, until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Here in the past four minutes, an 18 and two run. They lead 60 to 49, their largest lead of the game. And Corvisier McCauley has picked up where he has left off after that upsetting win against Xavier. He has 14 points in the game so far, three of five from the three point line. But in this second half, he has 11 of the 30 points scored by DePaul and three of three from the three point line. It's been a big night once again for Mr. McCauley. And for Georgetown, very, I, I would say, upsetting way to be in this type of position. A team that was up four or five, and not just too long ago. And now they sit here down by 11. Seems like they are just out of it, and they really can't find anything going on, especially on the defensive side. And now you have the Blue Demons heating up. So we'll see what happens, but Georgetown is really struggling from the field. Uh, th these last five minutes and it seems like they're in quicksand right now. They, they're stuck. They can't get out of this little rut that they're in and they're falling apart in the second half. You know, as long as the, um, the, the Blue Demons can keep up this momentum that they have going and you know the pressure that they're pushing, um, you know, they're going to have a good turnout of this game. Yeah. So Ewing takes out Harris and Muhammad and Ego Efe. So three starters now out for the Hoyas. And a pivotal time in this matchup as a pass inside to Matumbo. Matumbo loses it. That's going to be off the hands of him, and it'll be DePaul basketball. And not too long ago, Ryan Matumbo was making his stance known, screaming, let's go, and the Georgetown was leading, and now he's in, and <laughs> yeah, they're trailing by a lot here. So Jalen Billings now in. Tyler Beard, Caden Rice, Donald Carey, and Ryan Matumbo. Hey, to Gieberwitt, Terry with the ball. A nay for three. That one's off. <laughs> oh, man. Tyler Beard, mid-range two. Chicago's own. That one's off. Gets his own rebound to Caden Rice up top. To Donald Carey on the wing. It's Donald Carey. Thought about it. Beard for three. He takes a step back. He shoots it. That one's off and a rebound by David Jones. Georgetown now. One of their last ten. Oh, their last seven. A scoring drought of over four minutes. Inside the Gieberwitt. Ane, mid-range two. Nothing but nylon for the big man. And now the lead extends to 13 with 720 left. You know, I think it's really important as long if DePaul can keep Rice from getting the ball, they can keep the Hoyas from definitely keep scoring on them, especially with him being a hot three-point shooter at the moment. Beard goes on the baseline. Goes to Matumbo. Matumbo's mid-range too. That one's no good. And it's been nothing but bricks for the Hoyas. Lately, as when David Jones goes to the corner, Johnson for three. Oh, it's getting Sriracha in here as the DePaul Blue Demons are making everything. They now lead by 16, and it's a 16 0 run over the last four minutes. Beard to Billingsley. Billingsley up top. Billingsley three off. 
Georgetown shooting is nothing but good, or I should say nothing but good, bad. And David Jones' three is good. David Jones hits one from the top of the arc, and DePaul cannot miss out there. It is the splash zone here at the Wind Trust Arena. And a steal by Gieberwitt. He's got cleared for takeoff. He's fouled by Carey. And the foul. Gieberwitt finishes it off. And that basket should count. You know, the one thing that I'm starting to notice, you know, was DePaul having such a lead on um, the Hoyas at the moment. It seems like they're starting to feel a little bit of that competition um, that they were looking for earlier in the first half. And, you know, Jones right now is a really hot shooter. He's in the hot seat right now when it comes to shooting. So as long as he can keep that up and, you know, McCauley follow following right behind him with three points, you know, we should be in a good position to take this, um, take a win over the Hoyas. But at the same time, like I was saying earlier, if you can keep that ball away from Rice hitting those threes from that outer, that outer point, you know, you know, right now the Demons are in a good spot. Yeah, so it appears that that two counted. On the video board, they had 70. But on our live stats broadcast on our laptops, it's 68. So um, I thought it counted. Carey was kind of basically following him to stop the play. But Gieber would continue his motion on the layup. Uh, we'll let you know what it is. But on the video board here at the Wind Trust Arena, it's 70-49. But on our score thing here, it's 68 49. But for Georgetown, this is obviously really unsatisfying, I think, for the program right now. I mean, you got to remember, DePaul is, doesn't have Javon Freeman Liberty or Javon Johnson, and they are up by 21. They're on a 26 and 2 run on the Hoyas. The Hoyas haven't scored in almost six minutes. You know, it, it really. Begs you to question, um, Jalen, is this the game that gets Patrick Ewing fired from being the head coach at Georgetown? I, you know, there's been a lot of patience, and I think that patience is running out, especially you lose tonight, you're 0-11. You have to play uh, Creighton, Creighton twice, Marquette, Villanova, De DePaul again. Then, see, you mean, you, you, beg, you, you start to wonder, are they going to win a Big East game? And, you know, a, a program like Georgetown, you, if you fail to win a Big East game all year, it seems like that coach is probably on its way out. And, you know, someone that has, you know, I grew up in a household with brothers. So, you know, when it came down to watching, um, you know, March Madness and, you know, the college tournament, you know, Georgetown has always been a basketball, a good basketball um, school. And, you know, seeing that they're on this type of losing streak, which basically at this point, they are on that route of just constantly losing. Maybe coaching staff, you know, maybe they do need a change. Um, change is never a bad thing. No. But in this case, you know, you do have some serious powerhouse schools that they're coming up against. So I don't see them getting a win yeah, and, on either of them. In Ewing's time, he only made the tournament once. And it was in that miraculous run in uh, the Big East tournament last year. So I mean, if he doesn't even have that run in that tournament, he would never have made the NCAA tournament as a head coach yet. As they will count that too for Gieberwitt, and he makes a free throw to complete the three-point play. It is now 71-49. This has been all the Paul in this second half. Holloway inside, back to Harris up top. Goes to Muhammad. You know Muhammad having one of his, you know, worst games as a freshman, you could say. Just really struggling from the floor, three of 14. So Holloway goes inside to Muhammad. Muhammad goes to Rice. Rice, wide open three. That one's off. I mean, when your best three-point shooter who's made four or five tonight is missing wide open three-pointers, I think that's your kind of night as Nick Angenda finishes with an easy two. But you can see nothing going well for Georgetown. Their best three-point shooters are missing wide open threes. I really think with five minutes left, it's kind of it's getting to them right now. I think, you know, this run has really just gone. It really mind blown them maybe in a way as Harris drives in kicks it out to Rice Rice gives it to Carey back to Harris and Harris loses that one 
And the frustration just continues throughout the Hoya bench and the Hoya team. Yeah, you see the frustration across all of their faces. And, you know, I, I totally understand. They started out the game, you know, very well, very well paced. And now it's like they're frantic. They don't know what to do. So at this point, I think their energy, they're running out a little bit. Yeah, now DePaul is going to their bench. Brendan Favre comes in for the first time for DePaul in for Jalen Terry. Favre has only appeared in six games and has played a total of 29 minutes. So David Jones goes to Ungenda for the alley-oop slam. And that's how it's been for the Paul Blue Demons here in the second half. Nothing but excellence. 75-49. This was a tie game not too long ago. Donald Carey pulls up for three. Donald Carey's three is no good. Favre with the rebound, gives it to David Jones. The Hoyas haven't scored a point in the last 7.30. You know, with Ogenda, I think he's a, you know, he's not a slept on player, but he's yeah. being slept on down um, in the center. He's making most of his points in the center. And you know, it's very, mm -hmm. he's very graceful. He's pe at peace when he's there, so. You know, whenever he's wide open, I think that's where they need, if they're trying to guard him, that's where they need to guard him the most. They need to, you know, size him up there. Yeah, and if you can't do yeah. that. So, so Georgetown was able to score their first points in the last eight minutes on a Colin Holloway two. They trail 75 to 51 with 344 left. That'll be a foul on Amina Muhammad. We're gonna go to media timeout, so we'll be back in a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shaquille O'Neal for rap. It's not your normal PSA. Don't be stupid. Don't drink and drive. If you're gonna go out and have a good time, it's fine. But designate a driver to drive home. Let's stop the madness. Don't drink and drive. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Division I Big East coverage, live on Radio DePaul Sports, the student voice of your DePaul Blue Demons. Lead 75-51, Jack Thiel alongside Jalen Hancock. Brandon Bowen's back in the studio, and Jalen, it seems like this is all going to be the Blue Demons W right here. Yes, there's 342 left. Um, they're up by 24, um, but I think you could not put a bow on it just yet but I think you're feeling pretty good if you're DePaul you know I feel like you know with this timeout the best thing that he can do is he needs to you know on the Hoyas is end, he can just only talk to his players at this mo moment um, they're starting to lack their communication their sportsmanship with one another their yeah. teamwork and like you guys like you were saying earlier like you know I feel like losing games is giving you a reason to get fired so if you can't win those games you're looking to get fired. Look at um, the Bears' previous coach. <laughs> oh, you couldn't man. win the game, so Jaylen he got fired. The Chicago, <laughs> oh man, we just can't, we just can't get away from Matt Nagy. No. Here, but oh my goodness, wow. But how about the Paul on the other side? What a performance by them tonight, without Javon Freeman Liberty, without Javon Johnson, coming off their best win at Xavier, really playing great basketball. They struggled early on. 
but they're shooting 51% from the field, 43 from the three-point line, and it's just been an all-around effort. I mean, they're on a 26-2 and two run, so it's just been one of the most impressive performances by um, these Blue Demons. Definitely, I would say, a top-five performance of the year as Caden Rice pulls up and hits a three at the top of the key. That's his fifth three of the game so far, but it might be a little too late for the Hoyas as they now trail by 21. So and like you, no, you're good. like you were saying, like without having Javon, you're still getting really good yep. play. Oh, yep. Nick Angenda catches that one back and slams it down. But as you were saying, like Jaylen, I was saying, you know, they're down one, you know, star player, but there are definitely those, you know, lone ship star players out here. You know, you got Nick Ogenda, um, you have Terry out here as well. Brandon, um, let's see. We got Brandon Johnson is another one. You know, we're seeing stellar performance from all of these athletes at the moment. So, you know, they're definitely making up for that one lost player, and they're, you know, they're not backing down anytime soon. And Caden Rice with three in a corner. That one's no good. Caden Rice misses his third three of the game, now shooting a five of eight. And... <laughs> The Paul is going for alley oop slams galore right there. David Jones tried to set up Nick Angenda for the second straight possession. That one's a little too high for the big man, and that'll be a turnover. So Beard will bring the ball up. Terry drives in, goes to Rice. Rice to wing three. That one's off. Muhammad inside gets his the offensive rebound. Back up to Rice for three. And that one goes in for number 11, the 6-3 for Caden Rice. And now he has 18 points in the game. And down carry with the steal. And Sai Muhammad for the two-handed slam. And it's now to an 18-point deficit for the Hoyas. And Georgetown applying a press, trying to grab the ball. That's going to be a travel. And it'll be Georgetown's ball once again. Uh, it might be a little too late, but Georgetown's trying to make a game out of nothing right here. I mean, they have scored on the last three possessions and have a chance right here. Nothing really other than shooting the three-point ball. I mean, what do you got to lose? I mean, you know, Georgetown has two minutes and 13 seconds to score 18 points to tie <laughs> this game. Well, Trace McGrady, Maybe it can Trace get done. McGrady did 11 in 33 seconds. You never know. You know, so. if they keep giving this <laughs> ball to Rice, it can get done. All he needs is yeah. six more three-pointers. Three so. so Carey drives in. That one's no good. Terry with the rebound with two minutes left. That could all, I mean, it's kind of over already, but that could just be it right there. And Muhammad will just foul Terry right there. That's Muhammad's um, third foul. Muhammad with a double-double today. He leads, I believe he leads the Big East in double-doubles. 12 points and 10 rebounds. The unsatisfactory part of this performance is six turnovers he is responsible for six of the 14 turnovers by the Hoya so far and Jalen Terry will go to line for a one and one bonus and Terry has had himself a decent game eight points two of five from the three-point line five rebounds five assists and only one turnover as Corbisier McCauley comes and checks in for the final two minutes here you know, even though Terry is not having, you know, that great of a game when it comes to point-wise, he's definitely having a good game when it comes to how he is moving across this court. Um, you know, he's a very fast, you know, very efficient. Um, but he's also, one thing that has caught my eye, he's very attentive. He reads the ball well, he reads the floor well, and he also reads his players and teammates well. So that is a very key component to have when you have a player like Terry out on the court. Yeah, Terry made that first free throw. The second one is up. And it's good. And what a performance by David Jones. If David Jones records one more assist, he can get a triple-double. He has 21 points and 14 rebounds and nine assists. So David Jones is one assist away from that triple-double. And Tyler Beard is spot him. Go to the line for two free throws. Like we mentioned earlier, Tyler Beard, born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, went to Whitney Young High School and played high school basketball there. Uh, this is the first time he's in Chicago in front of fans for the Georgetown Hoyas. So... I mean, I don't see any uh, that family members that particularly stick out, but I'm sure some family and friends are here to check him out as Beard records his first point of the game and hits the first free throw. You think that David Jones is going to come up with the basketball and pass it to someone? <laughs> One assist away from that triple-double? He's right there, and that's why he's probably in right now. He just wants to get that triple-double, and he goes to Gieberwitt. And almost a steal right there as Kobe Clark comes in 
for Georgetown. And a steal by Kobe Clark. Muhammad drives in off the glass and in for two. Muhammad able to record his 14th point of the night with 139 left. In the menu, Muhammad with another steal. Drives inside off the glass and good. You know, Muhammad with a 16th point yeah. and his third steal. You know, right now, I think Mohammed is trying to make up from the first uh, the first half of the game with all yeah. the turnover, turnovers that he uh, brought for the Hoyas. Yeah, and David Jones has just recorded a triple-double with a nice inside pass to Nick Angenda. What a performance by the guard. 21 points, 14 rebounds, and now 10 assists. And that one was an air ball from Beer to hit out of bounds on the baseline. And it'll be the Paul ball with 105 left as the Blue Demons lead 81-65. Terry now with the ball. Goes to David Jones. David Jones kicks it to the corner. He wants one more assist. Gebrewick can't give it to him. Rebound by Kobe Clark. Kobe Clark gives it to Muhammad. Muhammad pushes the ball up the court. Goes to uh, Rice for three. <laughs> and <Yep>. nothing, but, <laughs> nothing but net. Caden Rice nails the three. That's seven in the game so far, and he has 21 points. He's shooting seven of 11 from the three-point line. Actually, all his shots are from the three-point line. They really are. And the Hoyas know. foul as well. You know, like I was saying earlier, if you can keep that ball away from Rice, you, we wouldn't have to worry about the Hoyas uh, catching up with the ball. But unfortunately, you know, it's just those little things, losing the ball, getting turnovers, um, that's giving the Hoyas yeah. the ability to catch up. And, you know, hey, they're, they went from, I believe, 19 points and we're just shy of 14, I believe, 13. Yeah, it's, yeah, like you were saying, as McCauley misses that free throw. Beard pushing the ball up. Kaden Rice has the basketball. Is he going to shoot? Yep. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's awkward footing. He still shot the basketball because why not? And Kobe Clark fouls Nick on Gundo with 33 seconds. But Kaden Rice did not have his feet. Almost like he broke his own ankles. Yes. And then proceeded to shoot the three. Um, <laughs> He's a very <laughs> sharp shooter, though. 7 of 12. <laughs> I mean, 7 of 12 from the three-point line. That's a very good performance by him. Unfortunately, individual performances. I believe he's over, if, games. if I'm not mistaken, he's over 50% of his three-point yeah. three shooting. So. I mean, he did hit 10 threes in one game already this year. He shoots 40% from the three-point line. He's 72 of 180 this season in total. So, I mean, if you want to shoot, if you got, if you want to got, like I said, he is like gives me Clay Thompson vibes. And he's, he's just a shooter. And he doesn't dribble, really. No. And, you know, he just prances down the court like, oh, I'm just going to go back to my corner. And it seems like the <laughs> corner of the three-point line, Beard that's his spot. Yep. And Tyler Beard hits down the three. Nice three by the Chicago zone. Always good to see a good representation of the Windy City. And Kobe Clark fouls David Jones with 19 seconds. Before you know it, it's a 10-point game right now. Uh, DePaul is now up 81-71. Georgetown. It's on a 12 and 2 run over the minute and 31. A little too late, but still, uh, Georgetown, they, they have made this, you know, somewhat closer in the span of a minute. So, David Jones, who is, in my opinion, the player of the game, hits the first free throw. 22 points, 14 rebounds, 10 assists, almost like a Luka Doncic game, you could say. It's a 6 6 guard, and it does have that Luka Doncic size, too, in many ways, but. David Jones, he's been that guy that's been able to step up. Well, Fliberty is out as he misses a second free throw. Rice is bringing the ball up. Question is, does he shoot the ball with 13 seconds to go? Rice pulls yes. up for three. Rice banks in the three. Are you serious right now? Caden Rice, everything goes in for him. And that's the eighth one of the night. And that's his 24th point. But that's going to do it. What a win. What a game. What a performance by your DePaul Blue Demons. They win 82-74. They are on their first two-game Big East win streak since 2019. They will look to continue that win streak on the 12th of February at Providence. And for the Georgetown Hoyas, they will return to the D.C. to face off against the Crayon Blue Jays. But Jalen, any final remarks on today's game? Honestly, you know, they played, both teams played a really good game, especially, uh, you know, the Hoyas coming right off the bench in the first half. Um, you know, ba basically just 
with their firecracker. You know, you can't. I can definitely say when we're looking at who the player of the game will be from the Hoyas, it's definitely going to probably <laughs> be A guy that might have hit eight threes, you know. <laughs> you know, it's just a casual. Oh, I'm just going to casually just hit the three-point line. Um, and, you know, it's. You know, he didn't really have that too much concern in his face whether it was going to go in or not. Most of the time it did go in, you know, shooting shoot over 50. Shoot. You know exactly. <laughs> Shooters do shoot, and like him, he's going to shoot over, you know, making over 50% of his free throws. And, you know, it's just you don't see too much of that. Yeah. And it is just so calm, so casual, collect. And then if it didn't go in, he just turned around and just redid it on the way back. So. I can definitely say they definitely did pressure um, the Blue Demons in the first half. And then come the second half, normally with those teams that come out um, full energy, everything put out on the court, they're kind of going to poop out a little bit when it comes down to the second half. And that's kind of what we saw. And DePaul, I think, start to pick up and get their momentum and, you know, start to feel this is what yeah. we need to do and get, you know, they got into their rhythm and their rhythm allowed them to get this win over the Hoyas 82 to 74. So. This is definitely what was needed. They definitely needed that challenge, and hopefully, you know, the Hoyas can get a win somewhere. Yeah. If not, we already know who's going <laughs> to get fired. So. Yeah, so behind David Jones' triple-double, the, the Paul Blue Demons win 82-74. to For Jack Thiel, alongside Jalen Hodges and Brandon Bowens back in the studio, we want to thank you all for tuning in to tonight's action. Stay warm and stay safe, everybody.